So you can't keep workers in the prison system. You can't keep workers in the child welfare system, which my work overlaps with a lot over there too, because half these offenders have children in that system. It's chaos. Hmm. I manage chaos. I supervise nine people. I provide support to about 15 teams out there trying to, in all that muck, keep people moving forward, keep people focused and positive and feeling okay to get through the day. I spend a lot of time managing chaos. And when chaos reigns, people of bad faith get traction. So then that adds that layer of hate spreading, if you will. Yeah. You know, not, I don't mean like gender or race based or anything like that. I mean, just people who just, you know, there's there's people in the world who, in the in probably most workplaces, who just like to stir crap up. So they get more traction. So honestly, it's, I was just talking to my daughter in law this morning about it. It has been a long stinking year, hmm. fiscal years, you know, kind of how our years go, the end June 30. And I just cannot imagine what January is going to look like. But that's none of that has to do with the practice of our religion. I mean, to whatever measure, there's always people in my agency who would like to see me fail. Whether it's someone whose lifestyle or religion or they're a biker, or, you know, that military, we have a lot of ex-military and bikers in the prison systems. They gravitate yeah. towards their job in uniform. So. And you know, I've had what I've just had for 28 years to do the same thing, get on the high road, treat people right, and trust the Lord, and try to do good work. So it ebbs and flows, but I'm telling you, it's tumult right now in this state government. It's, um, and it's a little wearing. So anyway, that's not precisely your question. No, it was, it was, you did ask about the last year. No, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll be glad to retire someday soon. <laughs> No, I mean, we did talk to Tim, actually, trying to think of others, too, with Tim about um, his conversations with uh, people in his workplace and stuff, people he supervises, and he actually expanded or elaborated a little bit about how he tries to understand where they're coming from, and it sort of reminded me, I'm not saying he said this exactly, but that... You know, if things are chaotic, how you help people through this? Because you have people who you're trying to retain and encourage to do good work and make sure they're doing good work. So do you have a way to sort of explain your own management, ma ma style. management style, or, or especially in terms of interpersonal, is it a question of trying to get to know people better? What do, what do you... Right. What do you what do you, how do you approach it's it? It's funny you asked me this just now. Last um, Wednesday, yeah, it was the morning after, because I was brain dead because I'd only slept three hours watching those stinking returns. Mm -hmm. I was in Wichita. Our leadership team went to Wichita, and our boss brought in these guys who teach leadership seminars. Uh -huh. And they do, they've done it in some other big correction systems. That's why I brought them in. And while between us chickens, I wasn't that impressed with the two guys. They did have some good points hmm. in some of their material. They were giving an overview. They were basically trying to sell as their product is what it came down to. But it made me remember this anew. Through the years, I've either prepared leadership training material for a boss or delivered it myself in various, various forms of it. I've read about leadership. You know, it's an interesting phenomenon, and as you probably know, there's just an overwhelming amount of training and books, and I mean, just the annotated bibliography they had for that one model was just, woo. And I've got a bunch of books, and I've read it all, and I went through a phase of probably in the mid-90s to mid-2000s as I took on more and more supervision and more and more responsibility. And what I concluded is you've got to just find what works for your people and you have to do what fits you naturally so the guys there leading this thing went around the room to each of us and said tell us one thing you think you've gotten good at and one thing you struggle with still as a leader and a lot of people said things like i'm not patient enough and who amongst us is but you know that's your weakness i'm not patient enough so 
uh, and you hear all you hear that kind of stuff a lot when you go to leadership training. But what I told the guy is what I on the learned. I hope I've learned humility. I just don't think there's near enough of that. And fo followership. I have an article that's dog-eared in praise of followers that I give out to my, you know, anybody who wants mentoring from me, I give it to them. Because I don't think you should ever lose sight of you can't do anything more than what your best workers can do. So, and then the, as far as what I haven't figured out, I, I told him I, I still do not know how to effectively navigate a negative, disruptive, um, bullying person. I don't know how to navigate those kind of people very good, which you think is kind of ironic because we deal with it out on the streets all the time. But it's different in the workplace. You know, people come along and they just are disruptive people. On well, the work, in the picket line, you're just seeing somebody for a short period of exactly. time. Workplace, it's, it's an ongoing right. relationship. And it's day in and day out, and when it when it starts affecting your team and all, you know, you because you can't go to the team and say, well, that person's a POS. You can't well, do that. Well, why would you have that as a uh, weakness, do, do you think? Well, because I think there are more effective ways to manage them. And I've read and even trained managing difficult people. And I don't like that title. There's a better way, but, you know, and one of the styles is the depicted by the grenade. They're explosive. And there's supposed to be strategies and all, but I'm telling you, when I'm in the moment, I just want to say, you need to go away. And that isn't always the best style, <laughs> especially when they're not going to go away. So it. Um, so anyway, that's you know, try you, to you, treat you, people right. You that's lose, you lose so. impulse control around it. Or something. Well, I definitely it tests my mental. But mm -hmm. um, no, the short answer of what is my management style is that you treat people right, and that has subtext. I mean, you support them, you care about them, you know them. I love to do stay interviews. I do do those or three sixty. You know how they say do the yeah, 360. 360, 360 or whatever, yeah, 360 degree. But, you know, I have people who work for me in half for years and they're loyal and they're good and I try to support them and I give credit and, you know, I just stay behind the scenes and help them. That's the main thing I do and then try to go advocate for what they need and try to get the big picture and give them the vision and keep us moving. I don't know what you call that, but that's how I do it. And, you know, trial and error. <laughs> Some of the mistakes I made as an early supervisor just downright awkward, but mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? Learn. I had this guy working for me early on, and he was a type A go getter. And it was, he headed staff development, and I had a real vision for staff development because I think good training can really make a difference. So we have these meetings, and he'd be four or five steps out, and they'd be the wrong steps, would be the problem. So finally one day, this would be an example of the poor impulse control. I said, so-and-so, why did you do that? We haven't talked about that. And he just looked crushed. I felt so <laughs> bad. He goes, well, I'm trying to stay three steps ahead of you, boss. I said, I don't want you ahead of me. I want you next to me. And so it worked. It clicked for him. And he stopped that. But driving home, it, I had an hour commute thing because I was working in the prison. Driving home, I felt so bad because, you know, the hustle bustle of the day, you don't think about things, but on the drive, you do. So I rang him up and I said, I think I'm not, I think I'm not helping you here. What, what can I do different? He says, just making this call takes care of it. From then on, we're gravy, but that was awkward. But it's that kind of thing. So the call was, um, 